moved to a town that brings back memories. It's where I lived during my college years, and it was a great place with lots of stores and parks. It's been five years since I started working, and this was my first job transfer. With new work relationships and tasks, it was nice to be transferred to a familiar place. After settling into the new house, I decided to visit the bakery where I used to work part-time during college. It was run by a couple, and they were really good to me back then. They were like my second parents. The shop is located past the commercial district and into a residential area. They also sell bread at the nearby high school's cafeteria, so the factory is larger than the shop, which is small and rather plain. I often went with Mary to sell bread at the high school, as I recalled these memories and opened the door. I was greeted by a familiar smile. Welcome, hey, aren't you Lisa? It's been a while. Mary, long time no see. She recognized me right away, and it made me smile. We caught up on the latest news, from my move to work, and shared some memories. Do you still go to the high school cafeteria? Upon asking, Mary's smile faded a bit. Well, the school relocated. What? Really? With the school's relocation, they stopped selling there, and Mary sighed. The high school students used to come to the shop. Two, that's gone now. Business has been tough, and my husband and I have been discussing it. That's rough. We might have to close the shop. I'm sorry to tell you this after you've come all this way. Mary's saddened face was something I couldn't forget. I wondered if there was anything I could do to help, but couldn't come up with anything. Still, I tried to support them by buying bread more often. Every time I went, there were hardly any customers, and I'd occasionally see an elderly woman from the neighborhood shopping there. The variety of bread on display seemed to decrease day by day, and every time I visited, I became more and more disheartened, fearing the store might close for good. One day, I was picking out a few pieces of bread for the next three mornings. Then, a young boy, probably in early elementary school, walked into the store by himself. He looked as if he had some exciting news, grinning from ear to ear as he looked around the store. He reached up high, grabbed a tong and a tray, and confidently walked towards the back. With unsteady movements, he carefully placed a single croissant on his tray. He then turned to look at the counter where Mary was standing. I'd like this, please. With a bounce in his step, he handed over the tray and fumbled around in his pocket, pulling out a wallet with superheroes printed on it. That will be $1.50. I know. He opened his wallet, but his cheerful expression quickly faded. This is all I have. In his open hand was a single dollar bill. Is your mom around? When Mary asked, the boy replied, Mom's in the hospital. She's getting discharged today. So dad went to pick her up. That's why I wanted to buy her favorite croissant and surprise her before she comes back. Tears welled up in his eyes, and he looked like he was about to cry. Oh, honey. Mary stepped out from behind the counter and knelt down to be eye level with the boy. What's your name? Jason. All right, Jason, leave it to me. With a mischievous grin, Mary took the tray and tong from Jason and moved towards the display case. She put some of the items that were very popular with the high school students on a tray and returns to Jason, who is waiting in front of the cashier counter. Special sale. All of this for just one dollar. Really? Yeah, it's for celebrating your mom's return. At last, a smile broke across Jason's face. She packed all the bread into a bag, took the single dollar from him, and placed the bag in his tiny hands. Hope your mom loves it. Thank you so much. Jason left the store with the same bouncy step like when he entered. Was that okay, Mary? Well, if you enjoy it that much, nothing makes me happier. Lisa said with a proud smile. A few days later, I went back to the bakery to buy some bread and chatted with Mary about this and that. Just then, a young boy and a woman, presumably his mother, walked into the store. Upon closer look, the boy was Jason, the same one from the other day. Oh, Jason, welcome back. Hi, I came with my mom today. Jason greeted with a wide smile. Beside him, his mother, named Sarah, nodded her head politely in gratitude. Thank you so much for other day. Not at all. Jason just happened to come by right when we were having our special offer. Your sin's timing was just perfect. Mary's friendly smile seemed to put Sarah at ease, making her blush slightly. The croissants were truly delicious. I'm so happy we've found another favorite bakery. I can't believe we didn't know about it even though it's close to our home. 
we'll definitely be regulars now. Thank you, but we might be closing down soon, unfortunately. What, really? When I explained the situation to the surprised Sarah, she seemed disheartened, her shoulders drooping. But she quickly looked up, declaring, Well then, we'll come until it closes. And with that, she and Jason bought some bread and left. It was disheartening to think that just as the store was gaining fans, it might have to close. Still, I knew that Mary would probably keep her cheerful demeanor and stay at the store until its last day. Knowing that made it even harder not to think of the way to help this bakery. However, the following week, I became swamped with work and couldn't find the time to visit. When I finally did manage to visit after a long absence, I was confronted with a completely unfamiliar store. Wondering if I had taken a wrong turn, I looked around, but that wasn't the case. Everything else was the same except for that one spot, which had been transformed into a store I didn't recognize. Where the quaint, simple bakery once stood, a stylish cafe had opened its doors. It was a cute, small cafe with a lovely wooden exterior. Realizing that the bakery had closed down during my absence, I was too shocked to move for a moment. Peering through the window, I saw a couple of groups of ladies having tea. As I aimlessly watched the scene inside, I debated whether to contact Mary. Then I heard a familiar voice. Hey, Lisa, it's been a while, hasn't it? Turning around, I saw Mary, her face even more radiant than her usual cheerful smile, always in her apron that she wears at the store, with a shopping bag in her hand. Mary, the store. Oh, Lisa, you didn't know. We renovated and added a cafe space. Renovated. I quickly turned around to check the name of the cafe. Sure enough, the name of Mary's Bakery was displayed there. Hello. Turning again at the cheerful voice, I saw young Jason standing behind Mary. Upon closer look, Jason's mother was also there. When I greeted Jason with a Hello, his mother also nodded in response. I met both of them there. Anyway, come in. If you have time, please stay a while. I entered the store as Mary suggested, and it was even more beautiful than it appeared from the outside. Just inside, there were rows of freshly baked bread. Towards the back, near the windows, there were small tables and chairs set up. It looked like customers could enjoy coffee or tea along with their bread. We were seated at the same table and had tea together. The space was bright and cozy. It was hard to believe it was once a bland store. Actually, the idea to renovate came from Jason's family. Really? Surprised at Mary's words, I looked back at Jason's mother, who shyly nodded. It's a very special place for our family. Jason's mother is an interior designer, and his father is an architect. They've helped several stores renovate their interiors in the past. We thought this store might need a makeover too. So they came and offered to help. Mary and her husband were initially skeptical, but they decided, Let's try what we can rather than waiting for the business to go under. Thanks to Jason's parents using repurposed materials and low-cost resources, and Mary's husband chipping in with the labor, the renovation was quite affordable. The grand reopening was advertised in the local community newsletter, and the word of mouth quickly boosted their popularity. After Mary began promoting the store on social media with tips from Jason's mother, some customers even began coming from far-off places, taking trains just to visit. That's amazing. Good for you, Mary. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate your concern. Seeing Mary's smile, I finally felt genuinely happy about our reunion. And I turned to Jason's mother, who had done what I couldn't, and told my gratitude. Thank you so much for making the store look wonderful. No problem. I'm glad you liked it. Her mother responded with a big smile. Actually, when little Jason came in alone to buy a croissant, I was also in the store. Really? When he walked in, he had such a big smile. I was wondering if something good had happened, and it was because you were getting discharged from the hospital. Well, I was hospitalized for about three months. It seems my mom had a severe illness. After undergoing surgery, it took a while for her to recover. She's slowly getting back to work, monitoring her health, and it seems her recovery is going smoothly. While I was hospitalized, I was surprised to see that Jason could now run errands and stay home alone. My friends stay home by themselves all the time. I can do it too. With crumbs all around his mouth, he said it as if it was not a big deal. But just imagining how anxious he must have felt at first made the boy in front of me all the more endearing to me. 
Being an only child, I was worried because he can be quite clingy, she continued. It seems she's delighted by her son's growth, yet there's a hint of sadness that she couldn't be there to witness it all. However, she smiled and added, Thanks to Mary, Jason got to fulfill his first act of filial piety he thought by himself. I'm very grateful for that. When she finally returned home after a long time, driven by her husband, she was greeted by a proud Jason. He eagerly pulled her into the living room where her favorite croissants awaited. She was so happy since she hadn't been able to eat them during her hospital stay. But more than that, I was so moved to tears by the fact that little Jason thought of me and bought it on his own. The bread we ate together after that was the best I've ever had in my life. I felt truly blessed. Thanks to my warm family and the kind bakery, it became an unforgettable day. Her husband also seemed to have secretly prepared a bouquet. The way he surprises his special lady is just like Jason. She said with a laugh. What kind of bread do you like? Jason, munching on a donut, asked. Well, I love them all, but maybe cornbread? I love cornbread too. Mom likes it as well, right? Yeah, for mom, it's her second favorite after croissants. From such small exchanges, Jason grew very fond of me. I love kids, so chatting with Jason was very fun. It's about time to head home, his mom said. But I want to play with you more. Jason protested. We're neighbors, we'll see each other again. His mom reassured him, and he reluctantly got up. Let's play again soon, Jason said with a bright smile, and I nodded enthusiastically in agreement. I've made a wonderful new acquaintance. I can continue to visit my favorite shop, seeing the consistent smiles of Mary and her husband. My new life seems like it's going to be a lot of fun.